Hey guys, this is Cameron Black with Gone Catching Guide Service and Addicted Fishing. And in this tutorial, we're gonna show you guys the ins and outs on double stacking your downrigger. So double stacking your downrigger can be really useful, especially when the kokanee's deep. Essentially, you're putting two of your fishing rods on one downrigger line, you're gonna double your gear down where the fish are at. So by putting two lines on your downrigger cable, you're gonna double your efficiency, but there's definitely a couple tricks to do it right, or else you're gonna have a lot of tangles and you're gonna spend more time out of the water than in. So there's a couple basics I need to touch on when it comes to double stacking your gear. And one is that your setback lengths on each rod are really important. If you put out your bottom rod at a shorter setback than your longer rod, your odds of having that fish break away from the line and tangling in the upper rod is much greater. So what I like to try to do is make sure that I'm double stacking at a depth that the boat's not gonna spook the fish so I can use shorter setbacks. Another thing I need to touch on is the distance between where both your fishing lines are attached to the downrigger wire. Generally, as a good rule of thumb, if I'm fishing anything deeper than 20 feet, I do not want those lines any closer than about 15 feet. So double stacking works really well at a lot deeper depths, as in 30, 40, 50, 80 feet of water, than it does if you're only fishing, let's say 10 feet of water. So right now, let's just say that I'm marking fish at 30 feet on my downrigger. I'm gonna wanna deploy something probably just under that depth that I'm seeing those fish at, and maybe something just slightly over so I can get both those lines as close as I can. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to set my downrigger to where I'm gonna have my bottom line at 37 feet and my top line at about 22, 24 feet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deploy my lower rod just like I would any other time. I'm gonna run my gear out. I'm gonna run them out to about 40 feet just to keep them nice and close since I'm double stacking. And I'm gonna attach it into my downrigger clip just like I normally would. So since I'm gonna do about 13 to 15 feet of separation, I'm just gonna drop this guy down to about 14 feet. I'm gonna lock it, place it in the rod holder. So now that my first rod is deployed, I've got this specialized clip here that's gonna allow me to attach this downrigger clip anywhere on my wire. Now for me, my first line that I deployed is always gonna to be towards the front of the boat my second line is always gonna be out the back of the boat. That's gonna be real important here in just a moment. But for now, I'm gonna put out that second line. I'm just gonna go out here to 40 feet again. And then I'm just gonna attach it in my clip. So now that I've got my second rod hooked up, what I wanna do is I'm gonna turn on my bait click on my Akuma cold water here. And I'm gonna hit the free spool. And what that's gonna do is by putting that bait click on is if the spool starts spinning too fast, it's not gonna unravel a line. It's gonna slow that spool down as I lower that downrigger ball. I've got my thumb on this reel for when I'm doing that. I'm gonna press down on my cannon downrigger here and I'm gonna let it go down to my desired depth. About 35 feet there. I'm gonna click this one in, stop the free spool, add it to my downrigger. Tighten up my line. Now, disengage the freeze pull, turn off the bait click, and tighten my line. All right guys, so I've got four fishing rods deployed on two downriggers now. I've got my deeper lines set to the outside of my boat, and my shallower lines set out the back of the boat. Now that's really important to keep track of and to stay consistent when I'm deploying my gear that way because first off, I'm gonna know when my downrigger ball one's released and when my top line's not. Sometimes if I'm getting bit consistently on the downrigger ball and I'm in a good bite, instead of reeling this one up, I can actually just lower the second one back down to the depth that the first one was bit and I don't have to reset and rejuggle the gear every single time my lower rod gets bit. And the other reason why is to stay real consistent on where you're deploying the gear is that if that outside rod gets hit, I'm gonna wanna keep that line to the outside of the boat and the line that gets hit, if it's the back rod, I wanna keep it to the back of the boat. So in other words, if this gets released and I'm fighting a fish, 
I need to keep him on this side of the wire. If I fight a fish on this rod, I need to keep him on this side of the wire. I always call it staying home when you fight a fish because if I grab this rod, which is my lower rod, and I pick it up and I start fighting the fish and I bring it over this way to land him, there is a pretty darn good chance that that fish is gonna get drug up through this line and it's gonna cause a mess of a tangle. Now let's say you're not in that wide open kokanee bite and the line that was attached to your down rigger ball gets hit. I'm gonna show you a quick, simple way just to reshuttle the lines so you can get back in the water fishing quickly. So let's pretend this rod had a fish on it and it's popped loose. I'm gonna keep it on this side of the wire, bite my fish. It's gonna take a second to reel in. Okay, so I've reeled this in, I've reeled this fish in, but now I've got this fish here, which is on my shallower line. Now what I can do to quickly get back into the water fishing is just to take this line, pop it loose, and I'm gonna add this clip to the downrigger ball. Remove the clip. I'm gonna drop this down to the distance that my lines are apart. About 13 feet there. Add my other clip. Deploy the line that got bit or had a fish on it and send it out. So obviously this way, if I hook a fish on my deeper line, I don't have to reel both my rods in all the way. But what this has also done is since my shallower rod and my deeper rod were the same distance, once I popped that downrigger loose and I added that shallow rod onto my deeper rod, it actually set it back a little bit further back behind the new one that I just sent out on my shallow rod. So since that deeper one is out a little bit further than the shallow one, if I hook a fish on it, it'll hopefully be able to clear any of the lines and avoid any tangles. All right guys, so there you have it. Double stacking lines on one downrigger can double your efficiency when you're fishing kokanee at depths. Do not forget to stay home wherever that rod angle is when you're fighting a fish. Also make sure you have a wide enough distance between those two lines so they don't tangle when you're dropping your gear down. Like I said before, 12 to 15 feet should get you there. And also when you can fish at depth, have those shorter setbacks just so you can avoid any chance of a fish popping off one clip or popping one line off a clip and getting into another. If you guys like what you see here, like we always say, make sure you subscribe to our Addicted Fishing YouTube channel. And also, if you guys are looking for a great kokanee trip, look up Gone Catching Guide Service. We'll see you guys on the water.